Welcome everyone to another Conversations Arts and Cinema here at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. I am Piers Kalea. I am so glad to be here with Jeffrey Guerrero, a multi-award winning filmmaker and entrepreneur. He is the recipient of the 2009 Prosperity Nation Award, winner of 2020 Eureka Google Power Up Grant, winner of 2021 New York City Artist Court Grant, winner of the 2022 Neighborhood Business Grant sponsored by the Citizens Committee for New York City and Wells Fargo. Guerrero graduated from CUNY's Brooklyn College with a BA in film directing and minor in TV and radio. As a filmmaker, Guerrero was selected as a finalist for the 2006 National Film Nation competition for his provocative short to stay with President Obama, Tom Brokaw, Anderson Cooper, George Clooney, and Philip Seymour Hoffman served as honorary jury members. Guerrero is currently developing five feature films and a semi-autobiographical episodic series about his upbringing, upbringing in the 90s in the rough and tumble Coney Island section of Brooklyn, New York. Let's give a nice warm welcome to Jeffrey Guerrero here with us at SIU Carbondale. Welcome, Jeffrey. So good to see you, man. Thank so good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, that video reminds me of a long a bygone era, the 2019, that was a 2019 uh, festival right before the pandemic. Well, when, all uh, your all your trailers are great. I mean, there were so many to choose from. Every every yeah, yeah. That, that's that a, out of all cool. out of all of them that we have. That's actually one of my favorite ones because it has the, the music. For some reason, that's one of my favorite soundtracks of the yeah. Of the I love the so music. That's, a good, a good that's the one. That's yeah. the reason I picked it too. And it I also draws, love can... uh, the Bowery Film Festival one too, which is uh, fantastic. Yeah. Should do I play that one now? And we jump right into that. It's up to you. Yeah, this is your show. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, I saw that we we're having buffering issues, but let's try it. Amazing. I mean, so many festivals, so many incredible films. And at least uh, for this class, making your first film, they've really been thinking about planning and pre-production. Um, and I'm just curious for you uh, how much that goes into what you do making your films, uh, you know, doing these events, how much putting into the beginning and thinking about organization, um, does that come in handy? Um, does that make the difference? Is that really where, it, where what it all comes down to? I think it makes all the difference in the world. You, uh, you definitely have to prepare for, for everything when you're making a film. You gotta have your, all your eggs in a basket, uh, expect, you know, prepare for the unexpected. You know, Murphy's Law stuff happens when you least expect it. Having a roadmap and uh, a way to uh, to get where you want to go and tell the story that you want to tell. You want to be as as prepared as possible. You know, having a shot list, have a shooting schedule, storyboard. Um, I'm a big I'm big on rehearsal, working with actors and uh, com communicating with them and making sure they understand what your vision is. So being prepared, I think, is so important. There's I, Plan, plan, plan. That's my big thing before you're shooting a film is just make sure you're planning ahead of time and uh, get your crew, everybody understands where you're, what's your vision, what's the story that you're telling and being able to communicate that with uh, your DP, your producers. So you're when you're locking in locations, 
when you're, uh, you know, booking crews, you, everybody's on the same page. And you guys are, are able to get to that place where you're trying to, to get as a, as a storyteller, as a filmmaker. Um, and always just prepare for the, for the unexpected. You know, there's, there's always curveballs that are thrown your way when you're shooting a, a student film or an independent film. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, there's two stories that I remember of a couple of films that I made is um, one of my recent films I did, Prerequisite, we lost a location. So we had a temporary hold in New York because you, you get permits from the city and we had a temporary hold on an exterior location in Manhattan. Um, this was before the pandemic when the city was packed and, you know, it's impossible to get to get permits because there's so much going on. And uh, we were told that we weren't, you know, we have a temporary hold on, on the location, but if a big studio comes in and they literally buy off the whole street, you know, they, they take priority over us. So the day before we were planning on shooting, uh, we uh, we lost the location. A big, there was a Clive Owen production, some big sci-fi film took over this the, the exact street that we were going to shoot, and we had lost the location. We were fortunate that we had spoken, me and the producer and writer had spoken about um, what if, what if we lose a location? Is there an, alter, an alternative location? So we had scouted different locations. So that's another big thing about scouting locations. You want to know where you're, you know, what's where you're shooting. What's uh, are there going to be audio issues? Is there a train in that location? A train station? Um, are there planes flying overhead? All those little minutia goes a long way in, in knowing ahead of time, so you can plan for, you know, and, and improvise on the set when things are happening, things that you least expect. So uh, we had spoken about it, and so the day before we were going to shoot, we made a decision. Um, to shoot in the alter the alternative location. It wasn't the exact same look. It wasn't what we wanted, but you know, we, we just had to like roll with the punches and and shoot in that location. It worked out. It it, it was fun, uh, and we got the film, everything completed within the the three or four days that we were shooting. And uh, yeah, it's you know Murphy's law, right? Things when you least expect it, things can happen. And you just, the more prepared you are, the more you have a roadmap and you know where you, where, where you're going, I think it'll, it'll alleviate and help uh, minimize stress on set when you're actually going into production and, and principal photography and shooting. Yeah, I hear you, especially in New York, especially with permits. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult. And especially when you start losing your personnel, that, that happens to me a lot too. The same sort yeah. of thing, they get a bigger film, they're getting paid more money and then suddenly yeah. you, you lose your main DP, which has happened to me every film. I, mm -hmm. I tend to lose my director of photography two weeks before production. And then I, but luckily I always have a first AC that jumps into the position or you're, you're kind of prepared for that too. Or, or that exactly. kind of you can see that even with personnel, you're sort of thinking, Oh, can I replace this person with somebody else? And if that person bails, what, what happens there? Yeah, uh, no, no, that's true. And nowadays, a lot of, a lot of people are, are multi-talented. They have different skill sets. So knowing what everybody's strengths are um, will help you out for things like that. You know, when something happens a few days before, I got to take that higher paid gig, you know, for whatever reason, that DP, that camera person has a family he has to feed. So, he, he you know, could call you. I'll be like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Shoot especially on the independent film level, right? You, you just always um, trying to, try to make things on a, on a lower budget scale. So you just have to be more prepared. And the more prepared you are, the better you are to, uh, to, uh, to tackle any obstacles that, that are thrown your way. Yeah, and I also try to remind uh, students of that too, that when it's an independent production and you're doing zero budget, <laughs> and it's absolutely zero budget, yeah. Don't get mad at people when they're taking the gig for the money. You know, yeah. you got to be understanding and you got to sort of make concessions that, okay, well, if you're not able to make the equal exchange, then that's that's also going to be something that, that you're going to run against. So you've got to be, you know, triple prepared for that possibility, you know? Yeah, if, yeah. If you're making your choices. You're not making choices for someone that's, too far out of range in that case you know exactly yeah no definitely uh yeah that definitely helps a lot a lot it goes a long way 
The other thing that, at least for me, that I find prepares me, and I don't know if this helps you as a director or as a festival creator, is the storyboards that you mentioned. And I don't know what it is, but whenever I do a storyboard, like I'm really nervous about a film until I do the storyboard. And once the storyboard is done, I just feel very clean. I feel like my homework is done and I can enter the space. Is it different for you or, uh, you know, how important is the storyboard for you? Or is it something else that sort of triggers that? And what do you do when you do your storyboards? Well, to be honest, I am a terrible artist draw, drawing. I can't storyboard for the life of me. Um, so I do stick figures. I've done on scripts. I will draw a little stick figure. That's how that's how great of an artist I am. I could draw a stick figure. That's how far I get. So I would draw on the script. I literally like just draw a little box and like the character and the shot angles. I kind of make a do a, a best representation of what the shot list that I envision in my head. And whether it's a medium shot, a close up, a wide shot, whatever's in the in, on the set, you know, like furniture or you know location, exterior shots. And then you convey any little thing that you can you can communicate with your DP, right? Because that's that's so critical. Is you wanna you wanna make sure your your director of photography knows knows what you're trying, what's the shot that you're trying to get, and how are you gonna tell it? Whether you have dolly tracks moving in, so you put arrows. I would put little arrows in the little stick figure box that I would draw, um, and then just show on the script if there's like specific shots that I would that I really wanted to like get. I would make sure to draw that quote unquote storyboard. Because it was, it definitely wasn't as. I've seen some storyboards that are amazing. Some filmmakers can can draw just amazing. I, I I can't do that, so I do the best representation of a storyboard, and it worked. The few the few times uh, the few short films that I've done, I showed showed it to the to the DP, and they they understood what I wanted to get, and they were able to do a a, a great job on it. Yeah, that's great to remember. So that people always get scared when I say to do storyboards. And then they see if I've drawn something really well. They're like, oh, no, I can't do a storyboard. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Stick figure's fine. Pictures are fine. You know, it's all right. Whatever you yeah. can do, you know, make it accomplishable, right? Anything anything to communicate, because communication is so central, right? To filmmaking and communicating to your crew members, your cast, your, your DP, because your DP is your... He's the guy in the trenches or the, or the woman in the trenches that, that's with you shooting shooting the film. You want to make sure they understand where you're going and you're able to communicate. The DP communicates with the gaffer, with the electricians, depends, you know, how big a production it is. And so everybody's on the same page. We know where we're going. Okay, we're going to set up the camera here. We're putting the lights here. The actors, we're blocking this shot, you know, however it's going to, be, we're going to set up so that you communicate that and everybody understands where you're going. It makes the communication a lot easier, I think. I think the, the other true. thing, at least with your films and knowing you, is how important the relationship with the actors are. And so I think that might be the other the other key component, right, is the script and that mm -hmm. rehearsal process with them. Um, how much of that is where you find the film? And do you have your shot list or do you have the vision before you go to rehearsal? Are you taking a camera when you go into rehearsal and taking pictures as you're looking at it? Uh, are you dreaming it up with the actors on the day of the shoot or during the rehearsals before? So I do have a shot list before. Um, and then when it comes to, to the actual shooting time, sometimes I just throw the shot list out because it's just whatever the situation may be, it just doesn't, it's not going to work out. So we just figure out another shot. Um, and also in the rehearsal process, when we get to that stage, we do. I do bring a camera. I have a usually have a small camera that I'm recording the uh, the rehearsal and going through different versions. Because you have one vision in your head of what you you see the the actor doing, and then when you get to the rehearsal, you see something else, and you see another shot angle that you had thought, and you kind of you know play with that with that new version of uh, of the shot and the new performance. You know, you, you you give direction to the to the actors, and you find something new in the rehearsal process. Um, and then when you get on set, you, you, you know, it's a, a whole other ball game as well, because things happen on set and maybe there's too many lights in a room, too many, uh, uh, you know, stuff going on that you have to like literally improvise and move the shot around. So sometimes the shot list doesn't work out. I, but again, and that goes back to what you're talking about, planning, uh, being prepared before you get on set, 
uh, at least you have a roadmap. You know what you're trying to do. You have a, a vision. And then when you get to set, you're able to kind of work with what you have in your mind and, and on the shot list and do something else. So I think it all it all works out. But at the end of the day, it's, it just it just depends what's the story, what's the what the story you're telling and how you're going to tell it. And you discover things along the way through the through the shot list when you're thinking about it, and then when you're on in the rehearsal, and then when you're shooting. And this is the last question I'll ask, and just open it up to students. But you know, we've talked before, and we've gone through all the amazing film festivals that you've created. But maybe if you can talk a little bit for for these folks that that don't know you and don't know the festivals, sort of giving them a, you know an overview of some of them and and what they might be able to expect if they were to submit or if they were interested in visiting or the possibilities of uh, seeing what amazing things you're doing as an entrepreneur in New York City. Yeah, so I uh, I run. Uh... I manage, I founded, created a six, seven, I'm about to start a seventh film festival this fall, uh, but six festivals dedicated to championing new voices in cinema. You know, I feel that uh, there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done in representing voices that haven't been heard in the industry. There's a lot of work. And I think now is the right time. I think it's a great time to be a filmmaker and get, get out there and, and get your work seen. So we're, I'm really focused on just discovering new filmmakers, voices that we haven't heard before, um, and championing all these different voices and providing them a platform and prizes to make their career sustainable. I know how hard and challenging I've been in this industry for 20 years now, and uh, it hasn't been a, a cakewalk. It's been a lot of hard work. I started, I cut my teeth in reality TV freelancing as a, I did everything from from driving a, a vehicle, a truck, PAing on, on sets, assistant camera, camera work. Um, I, I've done it all. Um, and then I would, whatever little money I would make from these, uh, projects that I would work on, I would invest it in my films, and that that's how I was able to uh, to learn about the filmmaking process and and able to to uh, to get. It. And then I would screen my films at festivals, and I was inspired. And you know, I, I had these ideas to to champion. I, I would see meet a lot of filmmakers who were having a hard time getting into the industry. So I wanted to give a platform and then give back, seeing myself as a filmmaker. And you know, that's why I created these festivals. And we're, we've been fortunate to uh, to be screening so many talent. There's so many talented filmmakers out there that are not getting seen. That's my big thing. And so that's why I've created these festivals. Um, we're, we're now at the, at the state. I've been doing this for 12 years now um, where we're able to provide cash prizes. Um, so the new film festival that I'm starting this for, Urban Dreams Mental Health Film Festival, dedicated to uh, destigmatizing mental health issues and providing a, a platform for filmmakers. We were giving away three cash prizes. First place is a $1,000 cash prize. Second place, uh, $750 and a $500 third place prize. Um, also with uh, the other festival that I started two years ago, New York Falls Film Festival, which was started during the pandemic to bring independent films back into movie theaters. We gave away a thousand dollar cash prize as well to a filmmaker so they can continue making another project and and, and keep their uh, their dreams alive, making films. You know, if Hollywood's not going to help us out, we got to help ourselves. <laughs> that's that's what I that's what I keep uh, telling myself and what I uh, keep doing and promote, providing this platform for filmmakers. I think what you're doing is amazing and uh, all the festivals are inc incredible. So you have Catra, you have Bowery Film Festival, which is uh, appealing to experimental film filmmakers, right? Um, yeah, we're, uh, uh, the Latinx, Catra Latinx. So yeah, that's coming up. Yeah, that's coming up in a, a couple of weeks. Yeah, July 18th to 21st. That's another one that I started uh, literally in the heart of the, in the pandemic. We were supposed to go in person. We went virtual, we went online. Um, which was not the same, uh, but we, we we did we went virtual anyway, and uh, it's our fourth year, and we're going to be at Regal Cinema. We have a great partnership with Regal Cinema here in uh, New York. New York, uh, it's one of the, the best theaters out here, and uh, they give us a huge, large screen. We're able to screen this film; it's great. Yeah, and I've been to the New Faces, New Voices, which was in the Alamo, which was That's beautiful. Screen, yeah. What's a, uh, and and you put on such a great event. And Catra, which was in Times Square as well. So yeah. just you you put on such a great production. You're helping so many people out and you're helping us all out today. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I'm going to open it up to students now. If you have any questions about where you are in your films, really anything, Jeffrey can answer. If you have questions about <laughs> the festival process, putting on events, business, please ask it now. 
um, Jeffrey's here for you. And you can just go ahead and raise your hand and, and um, um, he'll call on. Okay, so Dejonia, raise your hand. Hi, it's Dejane. Dejane, Dejane, I'm sorry. Hello, so I'm Dejane Robinson. I'm entering my third year here at SIUC in the master's program. I said of I study creative writing. So I am taking my short stories, my novels, and I'm turning into screenplays currently. That's just why I'm in this class, because I really enjoy it. Um, I love that you're making a space for people who look like me and people who look like you. You're changing the narrative. I think that's excellent. And I'm I'm very proud of you for, for doing that for so long too. Keep up that good work. Um, I have a uh, a few comments and questions, but before I get into that, what really resonated with me was when you had said rolling with the punches and like expecting the unexpected because I recently just did my filming and I had a story idea and it fell through because people pull out and that, and that happens, but I was able to find story ideas that I didn't expect and I just simply just rolled with it and I'm pretty proud of that. Um, and the question and comment I have for you is, do you have a good contact information that you'd be willing to share with us in the chat? And are you accepting mentees? Um, yeah, we are, we do, we, um, yeah, we are accepting, we, we work with uh, an organization here in New York called RealWorks, uh, and we mentor and provide uh, opportunities, internship opportunities with our festival. But uh, yeah, that's something that we can definitely talk. I can share my uh, my email. That's no problem. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm gonna write it down right here for everyone to. There we go. Yeah, just shoot me an email there. Any questions you have? Awesome. Thank All you. Right. Ron, Andrew. Andrew. Hi, I'm uh, Andrew Primus. As Primus just said, my, they also call me Prime, which is another way to go. Um, and my question is kind of just about putting out, because I'm kind of de deciding between two things to film. I know I'll be filming next week, but I have two different stories. One is much more kind of like a dry slice of life film versus a more like experimental and exotic one. Mm -hmm. um and for just like experience but also um submitting to a film festival what would you say is better to do for your first film if there is one um go with your gut instinct i would say go with what you feel like you the story whatever story you want to tell tell that story um because we're we're just looking for original stories. I mean, that's our main thing is just stories that we've never seen before. Um, and we're, we're very open and, you know, it could be a slice of life. It could be experimental. You could combine both of them. I mean, we've seen a lot of that. So uh, definitely just go with, go with your gut in terms of, cause it's your first film, right? Um, you don't want to yeah. like, you don't want, you don't want to think about it too much. You want to just write it and put it out there. It's your first film, man. You're going to, you're going to make many other films after this. And yep. you're going to learn from that first film. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I have, no, I've never, when I, my first, true story, when I, my first film school, for, first film from film school, I will never show it to anyone. Because <laughs> it's, just, you know, it was, it's the first film. You, you just, you're going to learn from, from when you make it and stuff. And it might be great. Just my first film was, it was not that great. <laughs> I have another question. No, Paul, yeah, go for it. Unless the, someone else have one. Yeah, you can go. Is there somebody else? I didn't see. You can go, Andrew. I don't think I saw anybody else. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, she, oh, okay. She, she, she should have question. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think she can go ahead. I'll ask her. Hi, my name is Cassiana. Hi, how are you? What's your, I'm fine. <laughs> What's your advice for an international filmmaker, the student who's looking to break into the industry here. Um, where, where are you from? Nigeria. Nigeria. Uh, make a film. 
just make a you got to make a film that uh that we haven't seen a story that's uh that's deep inside you and that you want to tell and that you think other people will resonate with and and uh would like to see i mean here in, in new york it's a very uh, open minded culture and city people love to see new perspectives new stories so uh tell us a story about nigeria you know we we love to showcase films from uh, other countries so uh yeah definitely uh just just make a film <laughs> it's the best advice i can get thank you you're welcome when i was at uh, new faces new voices with jeffrey um they had several african films uh that year when i was there if i remember that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh they were fantastic so uh definitely uh jeffrey's looking at bringing in international voices into all his festivals definitely uh, hi jeffrey i'm ashish uh, i'm a uh, mfa second year student i'm joining a student so i'm on my summer break uh it's great work i've been i got went through your profile like you know pirus has already shared with us and i went through the film festivals uh i'm a struggling filmmaker i just make few films and then uh, i'm very much interested in screenings of films like basically i feel like most of the films which are made are on on or on the online platform but you know on a bigger screens very rarely people see it you know now because we go into that tv box screening right now but i like screening films a lot what inspired you to start this film film festivals or film series like where did the inspiration come from from uh i i screened my films at several festivals and uh i just thought i could do it 10 times better to be honest it was a, i was really there was a few disappointment disappointing experiences that i had and i was like what is this you know as a filmmaker you pour your blood sweat and tears into it you want to see uh your film with an audience and you know on a big screen so i had some uh, unpleasant experiences at a, a few festivals so i um i just you know and i and it wasn't just me i heard from several other filmmakers so i just went, i saw that there was an opportunity to really uh, provide a, a an opportunity and platform for filmmakers and that's uh it and then i just started it i had an opportunity you know my uh, my brother knew an owner i wasn't going to do it because i'm a filmmaker I, that's how i started i'm a filmmaker first so I, my whole thing was i was always going to be a filmmaker so i uh my brother knew <laughs> the owner of a bar it was it started off in a little bar in manhattan and i just uh started doing it and it took off really quickly we were, we were getting a huge turnout and it really took off uh, the first few years and uh, filmmakers really loved it and they were meeting other collaborators because at festivals that's where you meet future collaborators as well you 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 learn about storytelling and um yeah that's that's how i, I started you know i i i did something called uh, uh uh screening kiosks in rural villages of india like i am uh, i'm from india so mm-hmm. uh, as a community uh i i did a lot of work with com- communities so one of the thing what i did is i used to make films with the rural people and display their films on the screens in their villages and the happiness i see on their face when they see their face on the big screen is like different so like you know i'm yeah. i'm doing something for my artwork next semester so any tips you want to give me on you know if i want to see a specific screenings as a as a studio practice like would you want to suggest me anything i'm sorry i, lo- I lost you there can you repeat that again I- no i said i'm doing some uh, studio work in my com- coming semester in the fall semester i want to do something screenings of regular series of films in a kiosk space like i created some, something called kiosk where i collect i ask people to share their films and i am going to screen them on on different They're different sp- different spaces like hey. it could be it could be a parking lot it could be a library it could be a, any places but you know how 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 should i collaborate with different filmmakers you know, how should this, do is, this this is in india no this is in oh, tamil nadu am here in the states yeah i am in the, in the okay um 
talk to uh to different right so you as with filmmakers uh you want to yeah talk to you i mean you're in a college with a bunch of uh, filmmakers so definitely talk to them and ask them if they'll let you screen their films and uh i'm sure they'll love to be a part of it uh everybody loves to see their film in a, on a big screen in the parking lot but uh my thing is when i started out i would go to different uh restaurants and like small businesses and and ask them for donations i'd be like hey i'm doing this little screening event do you uh want to donate something that we can give like as, as a prize to a filmmaker or as a as a raffle giveaway for an audience because in order to incentivize audience to come out you do something like that where you'd be like hey if you guys come out it's free to attend and we'll give you guys a free um a 50 dollar voucher or 25 dollar gift certificate for a restaurant which will benefit the restaurant too right because someone goes to a restaurant they're not going to spend just 25 bucks they're going to actually spend a little bit more so they'll see the benefit and they're getting the word out about their restaurant whatever small business uh, that might be out uh, in, in your area um so yeah, that's something that that'll collaborate, and then start Facebook groups. A lot of Facebook yeah, groups. Yeah. I'm sure there's a, that's social media, getting the word out there. That's social media is king nowadays. So you should, that's how you get word out about what you're doing. Do you see the brilliance of Jeffrey right now, which is it's the entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. So Ashish is thinking about spaces. So he's like, I'm going to project the film on a tree. I know. Yeah, I'm going to project that's the film on a stop that's sign. Right. <laughs> and Jeffrey's like, wait a second. So you go to a, you go to a, the, the different businesses, you incentivize, you do this, yeah. you get the vendors. But here's the key, and it connects back to what Kessiana was asking. And it also connects to sort of this idea of navigating the industry, which Jeffrey has done so well. We don't know our paths, right? Like Jeffrey, I started in reality TV. We both had the same start in reality TV. Mm -hmm. We don't know where it's going to take us necessarily, but we follow the waves that hit us, mm -hmm. you know? And different waves are going to take us many different directions in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so you will make many different films, but along the way, the, the what's going to make you money is going to be this combination where you're doing something that you love and maybe like Jeffrey and I, you're doing something that engages community, that makes a difference and also helps you make a living simultaneously. And then you've got the trifecta going, right? Yeah. So Ashish, as you're thinking about, you know, like projecting onto spaces and it's just this high art thing, you know, I think it's great to sort of take in what Jeffrey's saying about, well, what would happen if, you know, it's not in just an artistic space, but mm -hmm. what if it's something that really goes out to the world and does become seen? Yes. And I think it's so often that we don't really sort of, we put things out in the world, but it goes to 12 people. That's yes. not really putting things out in the world. And, and Jeffrey, if you can comment on that a little bit, I think that yeah. would be very, very important right now in this moment. No, but yeah, and those 12 people, I mean, that's how it starts, you know. So the first few uh, 12 people can, the next time it could be 50 people. And the next one after that, it could be 100 people. And the next one after that, 200 people. So I think just putting in the work and time and energy and, uh, and creating something and to, like showcasing on a tree or showcasing on a wall, people will come when you build it, as they say, right? The old cliche is when you, when you build it, they will come. So uh, I think uh, as long as you have, you know, you have the dream, you have the vision, put it out there and don't, don't overanalyze. I think one of the first things when I started, I didn't really, even when I started the film series, it was more like a friend, friend showcase. In the beginning, it wasn't like this competitive film series and festival as, as it is now, uh, it was just like a cool place for friends and, and new people to meet and meet collaborators and filmmakers. And I didn't know where I was going. I was just showcasing it and then it just mushroomed from there. I just totally built it, that got built out. People wanted to support us. We got prizes, we got different support um, from, from the industry. And uh, yeah, it's just, there's no right path in this industry. There's definitely no right path. You just gotta, Put in the work, 
Uh, and uh, keep writing, keep shooting, and something something's got to give. Eventually, something will uh, will take off. And don't get discouraged because it's easy to get discouraged in this in this industry. But uh, if you believe in yourself and you believe in your your vision and the story that you're telling, there's someone out there that that wants to see it and it's going to be moved by it. If you were doing the series a festival again now, knowing all that you know, would you do it the same? Absolutely not. No, I would. I would. Uh, I would be uh, more prepared. Going back to what you said in the beginning, planning. Think of. I should have sat down for a good six months and really think about things and planned ahead. And and uh, yeah. It, it would have helped out. But also then it goes, you know, you could overanalyze and overthink things too. And, you know, it might not have happened. So who knows what would have happened? You know, sometimes you just got to go, you just got to, you know, uh, do it, you know, <laughs> just don't, don't, when you start thinking too much. Because I know people that have story ideas and scripts, screenplays that they've been spending five, 10 years on and they still haven't done it, you know? And so I think at some point you got to just, uh, Go with your gut instinct and uh, and make it happen. You're giving us great wisdom here. And it's also reminding me of, of something Kevin Smith uh, was saying about how he would never have made Clerks again if he knew how hard it was. Hard it was. <laughs> how hard it was going to be. He would have never done it in the first place. He would have yeah. never taken out the 50 grand on you know fake credit cards to make the movie <laughs> is that how he did it fake credit, fake credit yeah credit he was the he was a, a video a video he was a video clerk manager video, oh. of a video store and then he took out um fake credit cards well i mean not fake I, you know saying he Actual was the manager of the store um, and, and that's how he did it so yeah sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it they say right? <laughs> i guess <laughs> It's... But no, I mean, I think what, what you're saying is is very valuable. It's sort of like, how much is the balance between preparedness and how much do you just need to just let go and just do it? And, you, you know, maybe in the beginning, it's more of just doing it until you know. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I'm trying to give them as much preparedness as I can mm -hmm. so that it's at least easier through the process. You know? No, it def definitely will be. Definitely uh, be prepared. It never hurts any filmmaker to be prepared. It could only benefit you. Definitely uh, having a roadmap helps. Anyone with other questions, especially about preparedness, or did this strike anyone or get anyone thinking about anything else? I have a question, but it's kind of off the topic we were just on. I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, but just like about the film festivals, and, you know, I'm a, I do plan on submitting um, so long as I like what I make. Um, but, you know, if I don't win by some miracle, um, is there still a way that I could like get involved, maybe do volunteering or something like that? Because it just looked like a fun event to go to and looked good for networking. So I was wondering like how would, how yeah. would it work? Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely Re reach reach out to us. Um, but you are you in the New York? No, I'm not in New York, but you know, we're I basing... went to a film festival, so it would. Yeah. It, it, my brother lives there, so okay, yeah, yeah, definitely we uh, we definitely need help. Uh, I mean, putting on these events are very challenging here in New York. So we, it's a uh, mainly a volunteer run festival. Uh, so if you, we're, we're always, we're constantly looking when the season, when the festival season rolls around, we're, we're definitely looking for new, uh, new folks to help us out. So yeah, if, uh, please email. You can email me directly there. I just, me and my team look at the, the, uh, the emails that we get. So Ooh, thank you. definitely. Yeah. Thanks for, Thanks for your interest. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, out of all your of your uh, film 
Estival, do you accept screenplays? We do. We have a screen. They all. They, we all. We have a screenwriting competition for all of them. Feature, uh, feature, feature screenplay competition, uh, short screenplay, and uh, teleplay for episodic uh, scripts. Okay. Thank pilots, you. yeah. TV pilots. And we also, we're teamed up, just so you guys know, with uh, a few distribution companies, uh, streaming companies in uh, that provide uh, distribution deals for all the filmmakers that are currently accepted into into our festivals so um yeah that's we that's something that we just started last year so every film that gets ex accepted or work that gets accepted uh gets a, a, distrib a streaming dis distribution opportunity with uh, a, a revenue share opportunity with the uh with the uh, streaming company that's fantastic wow Anybody else have a question? Peru, do you have a question? <laughs> I always have questions. <laughs> they don't want to ask questions. <laughs> I'm just watching this cat, making sure it doesn't knock down any computers <laughs> at the same time. Um, personally, for me, um, my questions have more to do with what's upcoming for you. Now, the rough and tumble Coney Island, is this going to be uh, a feature film? Or are you breaking it up to be episodic? And how it's far a, along is this? Or? It's uh, it's in the rewriting stage. It's an episodic series idea that I I had, uh, that I have. Um, but I've since been uh, pulled aside to another short script that grabbed my attention. You know how you have one idea and then the other idea pulls you away? So I kind of put that on the shelf for now. Um, and then I'm developing several other feature films with uh, uh, friends. Right now for this uh, new feature film, did the idea come to you first as an image or did you have dialogue in your head or a memory? Um, it came through reading uh, an article in a newspaper. It was based on the, one of the features that I'm developing, which is my own uh, uh, idea that I came up with. It was through it's it's, start, it's based on a short film that I I wrote in the record called J One. Um, I think I, I you might have seen a trailer. Um, so I adapted it for a feature a feature length film. Um, it was based on an article. I was read I read an article in in the newspaper and uh, I just. Uh, Start, I started researching. I, I contacted. There was a. It, it dealt with human trafficking and an investigation that was going on. So I contacted the uh, the reporter who put me in touch with the investigator, and I spoke to him about the story, of what happened in in this uh, article, and uh, and that's how the story came about. It, it became a short film, which went out to screen at, at a bunch of festivals, and then. Uh, it, it it evolved into a feature film, so I, I expanded into a full length feature film, feature length. That's interesting. They say that um, as far as idea generation, um, at least within the Hollywood context, most of it is done through making sequels or remakes, taking it off. I you know uh, book ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is uh, newspaper articles, and you've sort of hit on something that um, I don't know if a lot of people are sort of looking at. And is that always the way that you're sort of, or is this the first time that you read an article and thought of a film and then called the investigator? Uh, no, that was the first time I did it. That was after I did another sh another short. I had done it before that short film. I had done a, a short romantic drama based on a relationship that I had. <laughs> and uh, it just kind of evolved into, yeah, I used that as the genesis and, and uh, expanded into a short script. So I, after that, I did JY, I was reading an article and I found an idea. Uh, but no, I don't always, that was the first time and I haven't done that since. After that, I have just a few short ideas that I had, the script, the short films that I've made were either through ideas that a friend had or, um, 
or a, a story that somebody told, you know, I spoke to somebody, they told me a story. It sounded too good to be true. And it sounded like a great film idea. And, and then I uh, just wrote it, you know, got sat down. It's all about sitting down and writing it, right? I mean, everybody has a story. Just putting it down to paper is the, uh, the challenging part. Although I am writing something now that I came from memory, from childhood memory, uh, growing up here in New York. And yeah, I'm developing this like short uh, story based on that. So yeah, memory seems, see, memory is a great thing too. You can uh, definitely find ideas through, uh, through your life, through experience, life experiences, right? Life experiences definitely uh, is a great, uh, is a great well of ideas that you can generate from. Yeah, memory is a great one. Dejanay? Yeah. Um, I have one last question. Um, after the, the career you've had thus far, where do you see yourself in the next five years? I hope I'm still working in this business. <laughs> it's a tough business. It's a tough... Uh, it's, a, uh, it's tough, but it's very rewarding as well. I don't want to say it's like, the hardest I, I've done many jobs in, in my life. Uh, it's uh, I just want to continue making films. I want to get back into filmmaking. I miss making films. I the festival caught up with me over the past few years. I have a I have a family now. I have a child to support and, and a family, so it's hard to go back into filmmaking. Um, but I do want to get back into it full time in the next five years. So hopefully, in five years, I'll be making some awesome feature films that I can talk about here with the, with uh, Peruse's next uh, next lineup of studio. You guys be already working in Hollywood, so I'll, hopefully I'm still making some independent films. Well, uh, can can they come and help with this uh, film project? Is that possible too? Sure, yeah, definitely. No, because yeah, a, lot, once... a lot of these folks would love the crew and have that opportunity to you know, have that experience, whether it's being a PA or, you know, um, yeah. helping in any capacity. And some of them have, have actual uh, great skills to help out too. Yeah, definitely. We can definitely make that happen. Definitely going to need a lot of help. Uh, some of these projects, as soon as I get it off the ground, definitely be in touch uh, with you, Peruz. Yeah. We can, we can you know, you can always depend on me. Any role you need, I'll just be <laughs> I'll do that for you. Uh, you're the best boy. I'll be your best. Yeah, they come back. I must. All right. Uh, let's thank uh, Jeffrey for being here with us. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure as always. Uh, always an honor. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your time, your wisdom. Uh, you so we can't much. wait to to see your films, and we can't wait to come to your festivals. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. I hope I made sense. And keep making yeah. films. Don't get discouraged. I mean, I want to leave you guys like it's it's you know being an artist. It's hard. You're you're by yourself. It's a very solitary work. Your your focus. You know, it, it takes time. Just write, and then find a way to shoot it. When there, I mean, it's as cliche as it sounds. When there's a will, there's a way. I mean, there's a reason it's a cliche, right? It's the it's it's up to you. You guys have to like really go out there and make it happen. And, and, force yourself to to do it to to shoot if you really believe yourself believe in yourself as an artist as a filmmaker or writer um just uh, find a way do it and you'll do it you'll definitely do it thank you jeffrey thank you guys yeah. thank you it's nice, nice, well, nice meeting you all. take care take care, take care.